Good morning. My name is Frank Walisimba. I welcome you to Uganda First, a program that we hope is already instilling patriotism. We're, so sorry, we're, sorry, we're starting a bit late. It's uh, nearly 19 minutes past uh, 11 a.m., but we'll catch up. We'll catch up and cover up that time. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to this show. Uh, today, once again, we revisit the topic of uh, tolerancy. Uh, this topic, we, we, we discussed a little bit uh, about it uh, last week. We, we looking at how it can be used to achieve patriotism in Uganda. You know, um, w uh, like we discussed last week, it, uh, uh, um, tolerance is the ability or willingness to tolerate something like opinions or behavior that one does not necessarily agree with. Our discussion ended in agreement that tolerance is uh, critical. It is very critical for, for national unity. It is critical for development. And um, we also said that patriotic citizens should be seen to practice tolerance because it is among the very first values that can help us live in harmony. Let's continue with this important discussion and see how we can use tolerance to breed unity and hope because hope is what gives us purpose for living. For living. Joining us today is Fajil Mande, a senior educationist and consultant, also an artist, and uh, Mr. Hood Hussein, the resident city commissioner in charge of Kampala City. Welcome, Mr. Fajil Mandi, on the show. Thank you very much. Good morning and good morning, viewers. Very happy to be with you. Mr. Hood Hussein. Thank you very much, my brother uh, Frank. Good morning, uh, viewers. Good being here. Thank you. Mm. Mr. Fajil Mande, we, we, we've lost uh, so many minutes. Let's uh, start straight away. Mm. Uh, let's delve into the discussion of tolerance as a way of building patriotism. As we speak, there is disunity. Uh, even last week, we were hinting at that. There is disunity in the country, in, 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 in the different sectors, you know, as we know them, politics, you know, uh, religion, and so forth. And we were discussing, and still we're going to discuss, how can we remove this disunity? Can we, at one time in the future or soon, achieve unity through tolerance? Okay. Uh, first of all, this is a very important topic and a matter to discuss because we are all concerned about building our country so that we keep moving forward instead of sometimes stagnating and moving backward in some areas. Tolerance as you've described it, partly is the ability to be able to work with other people in spite of some obvious differences, mm -hmm. okay? But I want to say very quickly that tolerance should not involve people standing in favor of wrong things being done. Does it make a difference? Tolerance is mainly meant for bringing about positive change, positive building of our country, okay? And we need that as a condition of one living and as a condition of building Uganda. Are you getting me? But we should be able to understand why is there intolerance? What has brought about that? And we know the danger of intolerance is divisionism, people being divided, mm -hmm. people not having a common goal and purpose. So I want to say that really uh, toler intolerance or tolerance brings about unity of purpose. Unity and I want to purpose. go straight into that. What would be actually our unity of, I mean our unit of purpose in Uganda? What do we wish? That's the first thing we must establish. As a patriot, as a part of patriotism, we must all have a common goal as a country. Like sometimes I use the example, every time you hear about uh, America, you know they have uh, the American dream. Are you yes. getting me? That dream has brought people together in spite of the various nationalities that live uh, in, in America. Are you getting me? So the first thing we've got to ask is, what is our dream as Uganda? Okay? Our National Planning Authority has set our clear vision. Are you getting me? But we need now 
to go into straight in making sure that that vision is understood by everybody and how we can work towards and achieving how we can work towards that vision achieving uh, that vision you get me let me repeat this that vision a national uh, vision okay must be understood by everybody when i say everybody we should have clear programs or activities that enhance the understanding of the vision okay because people will not achieve what they don't understand you get me then of course i think that very quickly as a part of tolerance or the sense of unity okay we need to have a clear way of working you and i why do people uh, stand against each other because one they are not agreed on the national goal or the national vision or objectives of the country or purpose of life in uganda are you getting me then two people get divided because they are not agreed on how they should work mm -hmm. so let me put it there, that way that tolerance is brought about by having a system of methods of work in place how do i work as fadil mandi when i'm an education consultant how did i work when i was commissioner of education in the ministry how did i work when i was rdc in various districts in uganda are you getting me what methods was i well were, were, was i using to, to achieve the to objectives achieve what brings people to disagree with other people is various people are using various methods of work. We need to harmonize our methods of work, which will achieve our harmonized purpose of life in Uganda. What is our vision? V various methods to mean that some are... How do we work? Some are bad, some are negative. No, no, no. Various methods. I mean, uh, I am talking now as a, as a, a cadre of the, of the movement, government, a builder of my country. When NRM, NRA took over power, we talked of methods of work. Where we used to say, for example, there is open criticism, mm -hmm. okay, that we must not hang up there. Are you getting me? We must go down to the ground. I think recently you had the Prime Minister emphasizing that point, yes. okay? That we must all go down. And I had it even yesterday when they were in Changwans, that they must all go down. That's a method of work. We don't hang up in these offices reach, up here. Reach for example, out to the people. if he's a, a, a RCC Kampala, definitely our method of work, which we know traditionally was we must be on the ground. When the president was being sworn in, he talked recently, he said that there was a need to have, uh, I mean, to go down to the masses. Our programs must be mass-oriented. That means we must always work in the interest of the people. That's a method of work. And you, how do you do that? Okay? So we must have clear methods of work. When I'm running as a minister, what, minister, uh, what methods of work am I using? When the Prime Minister is working, what methods of work is she using or the Prime do, Minister do, using? Do, do, when the headmaster is working in a, a school, yes. what methods of work are they using? In short, we cannot build tolerance or unity or uh, uh, purpose, common purpose, when people are working wrongly and variously in many ways are you getting me so can these methods you're talking about yeah. bring a sense of unity absolutely bring a sense of belo yes. belonging yes 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 when you have when you don't agree on how you work or if you have not even discussed it because i am not hearing a lot of people discussing methods of work today earlier on in the struggle to build uganda there was a lot of talk about methods of work methods of work are you listening to other people are you mass oriented why do you think the president was raising it that we need to go back to be mass oriented because the government we want in uganda should bear in mind the interests of the masses the people down there not creating classes which dominate others and so on and so forth so once you don't agree on the methods of work one you won't achieve what you want to get for example if we want to avoid corruption which is rampant now it is really rampant we must agree on how to deal with the corruption Otherwise, if I am in the same office, I am another assistant in another area, he's in another assistant in another, another area, I'm a minister of the ministry. If we don't agree on how to deal with the corruption, are you getting me? We shall be just hitting each other, like we are in a boxing ring. Are you getting me? Are you getting me? Uh, uh, as, so, as we speak. Yeah.
co corruption is in fact uh, a contributor to the disunity we, we're having. Absolutely. Therefore, because therefore, therefore who, who keeps saying you, you've stolen a lot, you know, we, you, you can't be a part of us, you know, and, and w within ministries, in the communities, everywhere. Yeah. Mr. Hood Hussein. Yes, sir. RICC Kampala. Mm. Methods of work. <coughs> are, are yours bringing tolerance, uh, intolerance? How, how are you making sure that people are living in unity? They all understand the national goal. I don't know if you talk to them about it. Our vision as a country, where we are headed, do they seem to understand? Those are the questions we're asking and, and giving answers, of course. Okay, uh, thank you very much, my brother Frank. Tolerance. Our senior educationist has already highlighted the concept of tolerance. And are we tolerant as a country, as Ugandans? I think we are. Are we united? We are united. To some extent. Uh, to some extent, <laughs> you can say. Um, of course, we have two variables here that I'm looking at. Tolerance and patriotism. Yes. How does tolerance... Uh, it is assumed that tolerance precipitates patriotism. Mm -hmm. The more we tolerate, the more we are going to fall in love with the country, Uganda. But we have seen patriotism even amidst intolerance. Where you see, uh, I can give you an example, by the time Hitler died in Germany, despite the intolerance at that time, when he died, the Germans were very patriotic about the country. So I think uh, the concept of tolerance, we need to discuss it in a broader pers perspective and establish what are the issues people are united around, what are the issues that are uniting them. Mm. If you have the National Resistance Movement united around its ideology, but within itself some level of divisionism, but you see that some unit of purpose politically, you see uh, a section of Ugandans united around the national unity platform. They are also united. But beside that unity, do we have the unity of the entire country? Is there something that can unite us as a country? If Kiprotich, for example, is winning a race and we are all watching, or the Uganda Cranes is winning, there is that unison, that uh, mutual understanding. We forget about we our forget political entities exactly. and the, faiths. We, we de definitely forget. So that unity is there. And for me, I want to believe that uh, the patriotism in Uganda, the unity is there, but it depends on how we interpret it. If we can be united around a certain concept, me, that is okay. But if you, ca you can also choose to unite around uh, fighting uh, the senior e educationist and say we are fighting for you, man, that is unity of a certain section of Ugandans. Just as uh, I, I, I don't know any Ugandan who has been as tolerant as President Museveni, but we know of people who are united around fighting him. So uh, the, the, the fighting cocoons exactly. bring them together. So therefore, uh, one, I think uh, our national anthem, you've played it here, and it speaks volumes about patriotism and about unity. It's talking about united we stand. It's, uh, it's talking about the love of the country. And Frank, when you're to look at love, how do you understand it? And I want to really use this opportunity to congratulate you upon uh, formalizing your marriage. Oh, yeah. Thank the, you. The, the, <laughs> way, the way you love your wife, the way your wife loves you, the way my wife loves me and I love her, it's uh, an issue that we develop and it grows. By the time uh, you say your wife is being admired, it's because of what you have invested in her. Mm -hmm. You get it? The way she looks, the way she, uh, uh, she dresses, the way she conducts herself. So it's the same way to Uganda. How do we brand Uganda, for example? The way you brand your wife, the way you brand your husband, how do you brand Uganda? These countries we admire, uh, America, UK, um, uh, they are branded. And those countries, some of the, the citizens of those countries come here and admire Uganda for us. They see the beautiful country, they see the weather, they look at the soils that are so much in our national anthem, they look at the environment, the, the Ubuntu, the people.
they really are admiring Uganda for us. And for us, we are admiring their countries that they have branded. So as we brand, as we brand our lovers, our spouses, our wives, how are we branding Uganda? I, I, I love the analogy. Yes, so <laughs> it's the way we are going to brand Uganda that is going to make us love Uganda. We should not love Uganda because Uganda Cranes has won, because Kipsura has won, because Frank is representing us in, 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 in Abu Dhabi. We should love Uganda. Uh, we should look at the concept of a seed. When you, pick, you get a fruit or a flower, you, you don't look at the fruit or the flower. You look at the seed. How did you get the flower? You plant it, you water it, you garden it. You there is something that you invest in. You nurture to you to nurture maturity. it. Mm -hmm. So for us as a country, I think we need to strategically look out for such uh, aspects that can make our people fall in love with the country. And I want to believe that uh, even amidst some level of political intolerance in courts, because for me I don't want to call it intolerance. It's only those who are extremists who will look at a new poor, an FDS or a DP, or a Christian or a Muslim, and really look inwards. But any civilized person, any civilized society, we coexist. Even if you are talking, you, you, you will not feel comfortable when you see a table of only Baganda. You not be comfortable to see a table of only Basoga or only Muslims. There is that natural instinct, that, that love for the country that will pull you to say, but wait. Questions does, arise. Exactly. Does this have a national, a national reflection? How can we balance that consciousness? And we are obligated, we are duty bound to be uh, conscious in everything we do to ensure that we achieve patriotism. So therefore, the, the question of tolerance, uh, it is an issue that we, we should be very careful when we are debating vis-a-vis uh, -vis patriotism. We should promote tolerance, yes, tribal, religious, all, all, all aspects of tolerance. We can, we can promote it, but we should not, we should not sound like uh, some level of political intolerance are a sign of not being patriotic. No. You can see some level. If, when Idi Amin was here, we know what he did to the country. There are people who fell in love with him. There are those who felt really he's being an extremist. And indeed, some of us thought that some of his decisions affected us. But when he left, people loved the country. They, they feel now there is unity. Look at 1986 when NRM took over. You really see a people coming together. You see that unity, that love to fight to, to now uh, in 1994, calling the Constituent Assembly, passing the Constitution. You see organization, you see really the Constitution in 1995 finally being promulgated, and in 1996 we go for an election. You really see that the country is getting back on track, and indeed we got back on track. Uh, Frank, we are aware that in the 80s, in the 70s, DP supporters we're looking for, 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 UPC. for UPC supporters and killing them and even setting, touching their vehicles and you get what I mean. But when the NRM took over, we don't see that. While we see some level of greed, political greed, maybe some challenges we may have as NRM and maybe some extremists who are not supporting NRM wanting to take things personal, some even reach an extent of killing. But Anybody who loves this country would not reach the level of killing a person. He will say, this is Uganda. I think we can do better. Can the, we put the, this, um, what you call the little intolerance within the political entities that you hint at? Mm. What medicine can we invent? <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm thinking around it. it. It is true that things that bring us together are still very few in this country. Mr. Fajil Mande, you will agree with me. Mm. It is sports. Um, what else, if it is not sports, w where we come together and forget about our politics, our faith. Uh, maybe somebody is representing us somewhere in a, in, a, in a big conference and, you know, it matters to all of us. Th there are very few things. But for me, yeah. mm. I, I have this feeling that this c the, these areas where we come together can even grow broader. They, they, they can be so many aside from sports. How can we do it? The political intolerance that... Uh, usually stands out during the elective uh, uh, time there. 
you, you know, how, how can we deal with that? I think there is one thing that uh, President M7 has regularly tried to, to teach the country. The question of identity and the question of needs. What brings us together? I don't think I'm going to look for you, Frank, because you are a Mogishu or a, or, a, or a Christian or a Muslim. I'm going to look for you because there are issues that you need, that I also need. We are united by our needs. We are not united by religion, by tribe, but our needs. You want to achieve in life, I want to achieve in life. We can put heads together and forge a way forward. United by our needs. People that are not developed are the ones who are united by small things, like tribe, like religion. People who, are not, who, have, who have no national outlook, they don't have targets to go very far in life. They will always say, oh no, but a person who, is, uh, who has national aspiration, someone who thinks big, he will always look for uh, uh, the needs. What are our needs? When I go to Owino, what is uniting the vendors in Owino? It is the needs. Everybody has come to sell something to survive. And that coexistence is that what should, we should promote. Yes, sports also is a, a key one. But even our culture, the challenge is that we have so many... Uh, I don't know if I cultures. We are diverse society. Exactly. But if you see a Muganda dressed in a Gobasi, me a Mugishu, when I'm in the US and I say Muganda, that is Uganda. That is when a Muganda finds a Mugishu in the US. Uh, that that happens when we are in the diaspora. I don't know. Of why course, <laughs> and that's now when you will see the you unity. Come back home. That's when you will see the patriotism. See the unity here. Exactly. That's when you will see the patriotism. I'm just trying to show you that culturally there are issues that are uniting us as a country. If, for example, we talk of Chikomando, these are things that are invented here in Uganda. These are our indigenous things made in here. So those things unite us. Our culture. If you see the way the Uganda initiate their women. You get it? That is culture. It's a beautiful thing. But how many talk about it? You're going to go to our seniors here, teaching us European history, and they are teaching us, you know more about the Canadian prairies, and that, you know that, more that about... Than you know Chigezi. <laughs> than you know Renzon Mountain. <laughs> you know about the Mississippi Valleys, than you know about Mount Elgon. At least I know you Mr. Fajiri is against that. <laughs> exactly. So... That kind of education. Exactly. So, and that must also change. So there are many beautiful things here that have forced the now church here. When he was writing about Uganda, what did he say? The we Pearl. The Pearl of Africa. We look at it as a small thing. But if you are to really dig deep, how did he reach at that? And look at, this is a UK, United Kingdom. By the time he made that, he had moved the entire, that corner is almost the entire Africa. All right. So those co issues unite us. We look at us and, but these are small, small issues, political, tribal. Those ones, I think, it is like a religion. Why do people love Christianity or they born again? Every Sunday, every Thursday, every Friday Muslim is praying. Regular reminder, can we educate our people about Uganda? Can we f do away with this European history? Can I read it at my leisure? But at school, can I know the, 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 there is a rock in Nibukede? Who knows about the Toro rock? Do our children, and what is the value of that? And so many other things. So, it is these that uh, are going to help us to really rediscover the, the patriotism that we are yearning for. But uh, me, I believe Ugandans love the country so much, despite these small, small challenges. There is some level of tolerance, and they, we just need to ensure that we come up with programs to improve it and ensure that we promote coexistence in the country. Mr. Fajil, before we take a break, mm. are there situations where the population can be allowed to be intolerant. And well, do, do you uh, see some of those uh, in, in Uganda, such situations? I think it is not a question even of allowing. It's natural. Natural that people can be intolerant, as I said. For example, very many Ugandans are intolerant with corrupt officials. I hear you. Very many Ugandans, including me, are very disturbed by the non-performance of public officers. They are not doing the job which they are meant to do. Number three, there are people who are intolerant with the people who appear to come together, but they are not bound on a national issue. They are bound by uh, 
individual interests. Deceptive unity. Yes. For example, there are many people who are intolerant by diseases for uh, against diseases which are killing our people but could have been cured, but because people have remained careless, you can't tell me that somebody can be tolerant by somebody, I mean, be, or, or of someone. with somebody who is not doing what it is. Yes. For example, I can tell you at my age, and by the way, today is my birthday, I'm oh. 73 oh, today. Wow. Mm -hmm. Are you getting me? Okay? There are many people who are not willing to do a thing correctly. They are taking shortcuts here and there. And those people kill the country. They know the right thing to do. Yes. But deliberately, but they deliberately they choose the, the wrong path. Are you getting me? Okay? I mean, when you look at most of the cases, uh, you think the people who are corrupt don't know that they are being corrupt? They know. No, they are thieves. But it Co is going on. Corruption is, you know? a, is, a, is a kind mm. word. Mm. So, so they are thieves, you know? <laughs> Call them killers of the country. Are you getting me? So really for me, there is, I think, the bigger issue we need, or also joining on what uh, Alasisa has said. We need to talk about currently what actually is c bringing about intolerance. And for me, I will count corruption is bringing about intolerance. Mm -hmm. Lazy workers who are not performing their duties, they, they hold offices, they are in public offices, they get a salary, but they are not doing the job. You remember the other time, I'm, I'm still going to quote the Prime Minister, who said, why do we sit up in our offices instead mm -hmm. of going down there? Now, the question is, can that one be tolerant to people who don't go down below? Are you getting me? Sure. You can't. So when we are talking about tolerance, we should be talking about being able to stand against the, what is pulling down Uganda, and that will bring you together. Are you getting me? And also not allowing you to divide against another on simple matters, as he has rightly put it, you know. Why should I dislike you because you are, you are not my tribe? Why should I dislike you or not work with you because you are female and male? No, those superficial differences should not actually bring us apart. They should actually bring us together to discuss on what it is the problem. And then we need to the problem today. I think that the spring country is actually the most spring that I've seen in Uganda. From village to village. You know, what is spring? See the level of high pregnancy today. How many children are we losing? No, they just put it themselves. They don't the have to take their children and stand firm, you know, instead of just uh, uh, talking about things. In this plane, is so high. Are you getting me? So we need to address those. Once we have dealt with in this plane, we have dealt with uh, clear methods of work. We have dealt with corruption. We have dealt with actually forming clear goals together then we shall have patriotism we shall be able to build our uganda are you getting me all right 14 minutes to the top of the hour you are watching uganda <coughs> first my name is frank walisim in studio i am with uh, fajil mande senior educationist consultant and artist and mr hood hussein the rscc kampala city we're looking at tolerance as a way of building patriotism in uganda you can take time off and uh, send us your thought. The number will be displayed there where you can send a WhatsApp message. Also on Twitter, you can use hashtag Uganda first. I think I'll have a minute or two to look at some of the thoughts or questions that will come in. For now, let's take a very short break. We'll be back. Welcome back. You're watching Uganda First. Um, this week we continue to talk to people about uh, the same topic of tolerance as a way of uh, building patriotism. Um, now let's uh, take a look at those that we spoke to yesterday. Let's hear them. Tolerance would require us to understand the viewpoints of different people. The differences between people is a, is a resource itself. That's why the parliament itself has people from different corners of the country. And living in a democratic dispensation like this one in Uganda right now, accepting the fact that we are different gives us a basis of how to handle things. 
I love the fact that uh, the NRM under its secretariat, uh, they had to uh, bring in the element of the youth being represented, the elderly being represented, and uh, the disabled. That itself brings in that element of tolerance, because it's intolerance that you bring in the element of good governance. The country is too diverse, and it being diverse means that there are different tribes, different cultures, different ways of doing things. And tolerance itself recognizes the fact that the society is dynamic. We have over 62 ethnic groups in Uganda. If we had to say that you only associate with the ethnic group, let me base on tribe, we need to look for a way to tolerate each other because at the end of the day we are human beings and we are all living under the same planet. So we should actually work together because through partnership, through working together, that's when we can do so many things. As an artist, I'll give you um, an example of a music industry that was re revolutionized by the three people, that, that is Chameleon, Bobby Wine, and Bebe Cool. But right now, there is a division because of politics. I wish this brother who started with could still continue. I don't know our music industry would now be very united. If we are tolerant to each other, yeah, then we can accept our political differences. Because in Uganda, you have very, very, very many parties, NRM, People Power, FDC, DP. So if all those political parties, the members of those political parties, understood each other and tolerated each other for a common goal, they would sit down and tolerate each other and talk, peace talks. When you look at the developing countries, a lot of people have developed because of tolerance. So I believe in if we apply the same, same tolerance skills in Uganda, we shall reach somewhere. Tolerance helps us to cope up with that with a development agenda. For example, we have the vision 2040, we have the vision 2030. As the core principles of patriotism, it is peace and unity. If we are together and if we work together and if we love one another, we love our country, trust me, patriotism will be at the best thing. When we appreciate diversity among ourselves, we are able to bring unity because people from different cultures, people from different backgrounds, when we work together, there is a lot of things that we learn from each other. And through these diversities, we are able to appreciate ourselves. Uh, if I'm a Muslim and I've met a Catholic, let's say those ones in high school, you have to tolerate whatever you find in that school. If it's putting on long things and for you are used to short things, you have to tolerate so that you can live in peace with the school administration and whoever will be at school because those are the values that they do believe in that are the things they respect uh, by the way i like the military service that is how patriotism is highly instilled what do i mean they pick people from different calibers, different cultures, irrespective of their beliefs, but they all fight for the country. So I call upon my fellow youth to come fight for your country, love your country, sacrifice for your country. The thing that we can do is advocating for one love. Love for a neighbor, love for yourself, love for your country, advocating for one love. How Jesus tolerated with the Roman societies, the Roman societies had different diversities, but the man tolerated with each and everything, because in these diversities we have different opinions, different behaviors, different political differences, but how can we tolerate? And I bring this perspective to, the, to our brothers Muslims with Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He tolerated with Asians. He found Arabic religion, Arabic society, who had very different diversities, political differences. All right, we'll have to leave it at that because of time. We have just uh, five minutes to conclude this. You're watching Uganda First. Thank you to those people who took time to respond to our question about uh, tolerance. Next week, we'll have more uh, speak about the same, probably. Uh, from WhatsApp, I will try to get a few seconds and, and, and peep there and see uh, wha wha what you're saying. Uh, Mr. Fajil, you, you've listened in. But for me, my, mm. my philosophy is that uh, this whole patriotism conversation should start at home. Because if you, if you mm. take somebody, recruit them into the army or police, and they do not have this feeling, how, how do you grow it if it didn't start from home? 
in, 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 in Luganda, we, there is a, a saying which uh, uh, is in line w w with that philosophy. But Mr. Fajio, your, your thoughts on people's well, responses? Well, first of all, I, I, I want to, think, uh, to thank the people who, who have made their views, or, uh, as we have seen, uh, except that I think we are putting tolerance, basing it on natural differences. Yeah, I think we go out of those natural because those differences are there. I'm tall, you are short, I am fat, you are not, I am a Catholic, you are protest. Those are there. Me, I think what we, we need to look at is what are the things we should encourage among people. I have said, let people be focused on something of one personal interest, national interest, and honesty and integrity. Let us uh, appreciate people who believe that hard work pays. And if you don't work, you are not going to uh, develop yourself as a person, nor will you develop Uganda. Let us get people to believe that actually common purpose is the most important thing. Why do you accept a Catholic or a Protestant or a Muslim when you are neither of them? It's because you have a common purpose. One, all of the three of you agree that you should do as, as good as God wishes you to do. Number two, that you should build the earth which God created for you. And then number three, that you should avoid the rule, the, 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 the temptations which are listed, for example, the Ten Commandments and so on. That, regardless of whoever you are, once you respect those, the bigger issues, then they bring you together. And then when they bring you together, you are able to stand up as an individual and love yourself, work with your fellow Ugandans, love and, other, and build your country while you are building yourself. This is why some people are more interested now in building themselves than building the actually the country as such. So we need to actually begin teaching that, developing it at home, as you have said. And I've said elsewhere that presently, one of the things we have done wrongly is that we think that education or developing an individual takes place only in the formal school and not in the three schools of life. The home, it's the first school, home. the community is another school, but when you look at the programs we have there are not very, very strong. So we need to build it from the three education centers. Spirit, just like a child learns how to crawl, you know? The child should learn about how to appreciate uh, the values of life. Are you getting me? Values are first taught at home. Love yourself, respect yourself, respect the elders, respect your country. I learned from home. So I think we need to have it deliberately, as we have already started through the, 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 the patriotism secretariat, to train people in patriotism. Patriotism may not come just automatically. You need to invoke it all the time to train people in order to train them how to, I mean, why do we train people how to use their bodies in order, in order to get wealth? Are you getting me? We should be living it, but we have to train people that God gave you those body parts so that each body part is productive, so that you can build on the image of what God created and you survive, you take control of the world. Thank you, Mr. Fajio. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Hussein, in, in just a minute, in just a minute, wh uh, what are the things that um, you think we should uh, not tolerate in Kampala city in wow. order for us to have a good city? In Kampala, there are very many. Honestly speaking, I think we have been very tolerant. We've tolerated uh, nonsense, to be honest. <laughs> we, we have seen, you are aware that uh, when I was a deputy assistant in Kawempe, I stood against political rallies because of the COVID-19 standard operating procedures. And I said I will not allow any politician to, to hold the public rallies. And you know how our brother Bobby White, who, who was, mm -hmm. the president was calling a hundred people, he was calling a crowd. And I said I will not allow you here. And it is the intolerance, the, the things we are tolerating that are affecting us. Some people were tolerating him to go on with such rallies. What do you talk about that? But uh, what I can tell you is that, uh, uh, for example, we have seen all campaigns in the world against tolerance failing. You saw appetite in South Africa, xenophobia, the, the attempt to sideline, any attempt to sideline a certain class of people who will never succeed in the world. 
we, you know what happened in Germany when the Jews were being almost exterminated. We are told Hitler killed over six, six million Jews. And that campaign also failed. So any attempt, even here, to sideline any category of people will never succeed. I think one of the weaknesses we are facing as a result of uh, maybe the kind of people we are. Uh, look at President Museveni. He's naturally a good person, a good person. He will tolerate you abuses, he will tolerate, to the extent that if someone is corrupt, he will want to go slow to be sure, did he really? You get what I mean? And that is somehow affects us in a way. Because you will not, if someone is corrupt, you, you think there is too much tolerance in I the, think there is the too much tolerance as a result of who we are. We are naturally good people. We Ugandans, we the Africans. Look at the concept of Ubuntu. Anybody comes and uh, you, you, you mix freely. You feel everybody means well. Right. Some of us have tolerated people who have ended up betraying us. Uh, I have a person who sent me money and said I'm thanking you the work you're doing. Tomorrow, she has got screenshots that she bribed me. What do you do with such people? So it, it is uh, the, our hearts. We try to be good. We try to assume everybody means well. And we take it lightly. And uh, somehow it's affecting us. And f for us to stand firm and really ensure that we promote patriotism, we need to be hard. And that may bring in some level of dictatorship. For example, if President Museveni was very particular on, in, on every issue and said, I will not accept this, he would be dubbed a dictator. You have seen him when sometimes he tries to stand strong on certain principles. They say he's a dictator, but he tries to allow people to do things. Oh, and right. But uh, I, I believe Ugandans love Uganda, the and we shall really continue to preach love for our country. The conversation can go on and on. Mi uh, Mr. Producer, ca can we peep uh, uh, the WhatsApp messages? Two, three? All right, NTV, happy for the discussion uh, about intolerance in Uganda. Intolerance in Uganda starts on an individual basis. If Ugandans focus first on themselves, their behavior, and the, their basic needs that will move their livelihood forward, Uganda will, and all Ugandans will rejoice in that lovely and peaceful country. Okay, Gilbert, thank you. Many Ugandans are tolerant, but sometimes one can tolerate until patience gets exhausted. That is true. Uh, lastly, um, Uganda being an heter heterogeneous country require Ugandans to set their differences aside and focus on the factors that can develop the country instead of uh, personal interest. I'm grateful that our founding fathers left a legacy that we need to borrow a leaf from. For God and my country, Abuya Stanley, thank you so much. And the others who are sending in your thoughts and questions. I am so sorry we can't take them on. Uh, time is against us. It is already three minutes past midday. We should be out of here. Thank you for watching Uganda First. We'll be back on Thursday, 11 a.m. up to midday. My name is Frank Olisimbi. We thank so much the National Secretariat for Patriotism Corps for making this program happen. Have a good afternoon.